It's your last day. I'm sorry. This is the video my mom doesn't want to watch. Mom watches all of our videos, so if you're watching this one, Mom, you might want to stop. Today, we're having three of our goats butchered. This is a first for us, and it was a difficult decision. We bought DJ, Oscar, and Frank as bottle baby goats specifically to raise for meat. Because they were raised without their mother, they had to be hand-fed from bottles when they were little. Consequently, they are the most people-friendly goats. We're not gonna butcher them ourselves. Mountain Stream Meat Company will be doing that for us. They have an interesting service with some kind of a mobile trailer to take care of business out here. I'll try to get the process explained on camera without actually showing any of our goats being killed. The meat will be for our own consumption. These goats have lived a great life out here and this was their purpose. This is kind of a test for us. Well, maybe a test for me. If we're gonna be serious about a homestead lifestyle, we have to be willing to put animals into the freezer. <laughs> DJ here is one of my favorite goats. He is always the most curious and one of the first up to the fence to say hello when I'm out here. Let's go ahead and just introduce all the goats that we're slaughtering. Uh, here they come. Okay, the more red one is Oscar here. This one is Oscar. He's a little rambunctious today. The one with the curly horn is Frank. And of course, DJ is the one with this really weird little side skur here. Yes. They're a little too friendly, actually. Yes. Too friendly. Too friendly. There's nothing special about these goats other than the fact that they are adorable. No, you're not a show goat. We can't milk you because you're a buck. These are not the kind of goats that you could register and breed for money. I will be sorry to see them go though, because they are so good on camera. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, Oscar. Yeah, relax, relax. I've been feeding them in the mornings. Well, for about a month now, I've been feeding them in the mornings and the evenings. So they're kind of expecting some food right now. They were fed last night and we're not gonna feed them again because we don't want the food in the, in the digestive tract while they're being butchered. Yes, Oscar is one of Wendy's favorites. Frank here is the most reticent of the bottle baby goats. He's a little more chill. Yeah, a little more mellow goat. <laughs> you 
No spoilers here. The guys have come and gone. I'll get back to their process in a moment. I've had a few hours to think about what happened today. This is my genuine experience that I'm sharing with you. It will not be easy to watch. I haven't had a chance to look at the video clips yet, but I think in the editing, I'll just cut to black for certain parts. I've had a chance to talk with Ben, a friend of mine and one of our viewers. He reminded me that most of us are very disconnected from our food and that this video will be a service to help people appreciate the meaning and value of the meat that we consume. Seriously though, mom, if you're still watching, you might want to stop. All right, so the actual dispatching of the goats mm -hmm. is done with a gun, yeah. so it'll be quick and painless. That's the theory. Now, how much of the actual processing are you going to be doing here with the trailer? We'll just pull their hide off, take their guts out, and then take the meat back to the shop to cut it and wrap it there. Okay, very good, very good. Typically with lambs and goats, everything is uh, in the cooler for a couple of days, so it fully chills down and... Yeah and uh, you can hang them for like five days. They're okay, to cut after. makes them a little more tender that way? Yeah, and the meat kind of sets up, so yeah. it's nicer to cut. Yeah, all right, tender. great. Well, we're gonna actually do it out here on the road because trying to back up onto our driveway was, trying to back up onto our driveway was pretty difficult. <laughs> now, is it there. best to walk the goats out here and, and shoot them next to your trailer so Are we're not they? looking heavy? Oh, uh, they're not very heavy. Um, are they tame? Oh, they're super tame. Oh, you got halters? I've got, I've got a lead. Perfect. Yeah, we can lead them like to here. Do you care if they're blood like right here? Oh, that's fine. That's fine. We're going to be doing the tan goats. The tan ones? The tan ones, yep. Yeah. Okay. They walk pretty easy? Um, we don't walk them around much. Okay. But they're, you know, they're super friendly, very easy to... Probably just grab them by the horn and walk them yeah. like halfway. Want to drag him so far? Okay. Don't let go of it. Oh. And if you want to use this, yeah, we can put okay. it on. It's on backwards, oh, but it'll probably sorry. work. Okay. You want to take this one, Matt? I just have the one, but. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Come here, bud. I don't know. You think we just drag them? Uh, yeah, I'll just drag them after you shoot them. Okay. They're not going to be that heavy, I don't think. Let's, let's, go. let's go get this one done. Get that one set up and then me and Connor can grab the last two while they come off the thing. Yeah, they're usually not this skittish. first? Yeah, it'll be all right. Might be it. <sighs> you okay if I bleed them in here? Go ahead. I am very glad we've got professionals helping us with this. Blue. Okay. They're hard to. They're so small that. Yeah. I like to do it up close as much as possible. Yeah. Well. Come 
on, Frank. Cooperate. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Settle down. Settle down. Got him now? Okay. Settle down. Okay. Settle down. <laughs> just, just stand for a second. Yeah. You're good. Wow, okay, so, yeah. Pretty simple. Main Eviscerate and hang and take it back to do all the fine cutting. Yep, beef hang for two weeks, apparently. Richard came in. I finally figured out why um, I kept tearing right there. Yeah, I was pulling it too far down. Good? Yep. up. Do you guys tend to prefer to do this uh, out here at places where you know where the goats are versus have them bring the live animals in and do them back at your place? Um, yeah, we pretty much do. Seems pretty convenient for us to, yeah. to do it that way. Pretty much do it mobile. It's, we do a few here and there for other people at my place, but most of the time it's people out of the area yeah. needing something done or an emergency and we, we aren't. We don't got time to get to them. So. Something you can actually keep them there for a little bit if they have to? Uh, no, I usually kill them same day. Just same day? Okay. Animals tend to cause problems. Now, did you guys start off as just a farm yourself and just started butchering for other people, or yeah. how'd you get into this? Um, I, the shop, my grandparents used to cut up there from like the mid 70s to the mid 90s. Yeah. And then they retired. They just did a little bit, and then uh, they passed away, and I bought the place and started going again. And that was four years ago. And Matt's been doing it for what, 12 years. I started at a small slaughterhouse in 2007. Yeah. And I was mainly cutting, so I'm just getting into learning to butcher for the last couple of years but I haven't been doing it every day. So it's good to work on stuff like this that I'm not super familiar with. Because <laughs> it means I get good practice in. Sure, Changing sure. Goats. Yeah, well, it's just- I haven't done very many goats. Side. So, so like, how do you like It's that nice to work on something different. Now, do we need to you, tell you guys uh, well, the type of cuts that we want, or uh, do you guys yeah. just kind of know what the standards are or something? Yeah, it's kind of up to you. It would be a conversation later once we get into the shop and yeah. give you your um, hanging weights and stuff like sure, that. Sure, sure, okay. Yeah. yeah, like I said, this is the first time we've uh, been through the process, so mm -hmm. it's all new to me. This part of the service is just dressing the animal and getting it to the cooler. Yep, this is something the neighbors don't see every day. <laughs> we probably eat meat though. So. Yeah, yeah. Is that thing under control? Yeah. It's, they're intact, so it's... Yeah, it sticks a little harder. Yeah. I would say this meat's pretty nice, actually. Oh, good. As far as goes, yeah. So the hide actually sticks 
stronger because we didn't um, castrate them? Yeah, they're harder to peel. Wow, okay. Like you almost have to skin them with a knife. What we try to do is use our fist on my, like lambs and stuff like that. Just to kind of peel them back. Yeah, you can kind of work it in. Yeah. But you just need a little bit more help with the knife. Oh, yep, that's it. That's the one. Right, right past the... See, on your video, you can have two different ways. Yeah. The hanging good. and the cradling. Well, I'm sorry we didn't castrate them for you. It's this, oh, okay. this much oh, more work here. All good. It's more that's experience for us. Yeah. Yeah. Now this may be a dumb question, but when you load up your truck with all the different uh, carcasses, yeah. do you like label them so you know which one comes from who and where, where they're uh, going back to? They go in a very specific order and they don't move. Okay, so we all right. Where we stopped. Um, you mean your order like according of... to where we pick up? Yeah. yeah. That's, so like that's how we know. They go like with the beef. You can see them hanging in there. Yeah. When we put the beef in, they're hanging in halves, and then we put a. Uh, Front quarter, front quarter each side, and then a hind quarter, hind quarter. Okay, so just so, basically yep. front to back. Yeah, so we land them on that half round, and then front quarter, hind quarters, and then they just work their way back. Yeah. And then when we get back, I tag them in the shop. So. Yeah. But they can't, once they're in there, they ain't moving anywhere, so. Yeah. And like the last stop, we did four beef, and the stop before that, we did two beef. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be your three goats, and then we got like nine more pigs to go. Got a, got a tough spot there? Yeah, you lose the felt line sometimes. See the connective tissue here? Yeah. You want to peel it, and it should look like this all the way down. I mean, this doesn't look, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just yep, yep. us being picky, probably. We're not in New Zealand, do you? Where they do a thousand things a day? guys were first trying to pull back into our driveway, I got a video clip of the front of their trailer. You saw that crane arm on top in action. They also have a mounted generator for electricity and a pressurized water tank with a pump for their hoses. It's a very efficient setup. I appreciated their efficiency. They were not out here to be gentle with our goats or to get to know them. Their work was professional, and the convenience of their on-site service was outstanding. He's my boo-boo. Show him how he licks. Show everybody how he licks the food. <laughs> oh, hello. Got a little more room in there now. This is maybe a little bit better space for for the remaining goats. Yep. That's good. Mm -hmm. Needs to be big, smaller 
smaller space for the or they need more space for goat so this is they had too many goats in there for too long this is better yeah. oh, what am i going to cook with the meat so yeah. my thought is is that for the most part we'll do more like things that have more spice and probably heat to them so things like um more more intensely flavored types of things so like um mexican food indian food um things that have more a lot more herbs and garlic and onion and that kind of thing thrown into it as well so um, I like making, for example, just like a roasted red pepper, sort of spicy spaghetti sauce. So I think that would actually work pretty well with, with goat meat. Um, so not too worried about it. I think it will be fine. The, the guys were telling Brian that, that they thought that the goat meat might be a little unpalatable because of them not having been fixed but my opinion is is that they only started smelling bucky again from the winter season just the last couple of weeks so i don't think they have really have this hugely soaked in sort of buckiness so once they get into it i think it'll be fine but we'll see i mean i i think some people like more of a gamey kind of meat and other people don't i grew up eating deer meat and very gamey meats so i don't think it's gonna be a problem to, for me but we'll see what ryan thinks he did not grow up with those kinds of things so but i think if i can start them off with some things that maybe make it seem like it's part of the dish and then slowly work it out into other things he's probably not gonna know well, everything Wendy cooks is delicious, so I'm not worried about that. <laughs> sure. I mean, it is. It's true. Not everything I cook is delicious. Some of it's too experimental to be delicious. <laughs>